Johnson with his story of the Maverick Highway 52 and its relationship to Stanley County. Thank you, Dr. Seltzer. That was, that was, <clears throat> he takes more time than that to set up for his first tee shot on the golf course. <laughs> Okay, well, welcome. I'm, I'm Eric Johnson, and uh, welcome to, to this tonight. I'm very uh, good to see a lot of friendly people out there. Okay, my, my interest in this program, uh, we, we moved here in 1980, and I noticed that this US 52 was an even-numbered highway. It was running north and south. Well, anyway, that, that, that bothered me because even number of sideways is supposed to run east-west, odd number run north-south. Oh well, tuck that away. Uh, noticing when we go back to Michigan, traveling through Virginia, West Virginia, again, US 52 was labeled uh, north and south, and not east and west. In 2003, we were out in Iowa, and uh, I noticed that uh, we, we had US 52 out there running east and west. I said, wait a minute, that's my highway. What are you doing in Iowa? <laughs> and it was. And then I had a Wake Forest, I had a lot of medical students over the years. And I had a Wake Forest medical student from Rochester, Minnesota. And he said, you know, he said, uh, US 52 is the main drag running through Rochester, Minnesota. He said, I came down to, to med school at Wake Forest, and there it was running right through the middle of Winston-Salem. And I came to Alabama to follow me to Alabama. I said, what's going on here? And I didn't know at that time. Kind of tucked that away. And then my friend Dr. Seltzer happened to mention uh, that he had an uncle who was on the faculty at uh, Purdue in West Lafayette, Indiana, and he lived near US 52. So that was something else. So anyway, I was saying, this is a Maverick Highway. It's not following the rules of the road. And I got a little more curious in it than that. And you will have to enjoy my curiosity now. Okay. Well, at one time, there were no, there were no paved roads in this, in this country. And the, the first organized travel roads, such as the, the Cumberland Road that, that led up to Kentucky, and then later the wagon trails, the Oregon Trail, the Santa Fe Trail, were well known. Then stagecoaches came along. They're all on dirt roads. By the way, does, uh, does anyone besides Ben Jolly here know when the last stagecoach robbery occurred? It was on uh, December 5th, 1916 in Jarbridge, Nevada, and they got away with $4,000 in loot. So that, Good. By the way, I want to thank you because Jeopardy's on and then Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> then, of course, we had trains, and the trains greatly sped up transportation or moving people back and forth across the country. Then, when the automobile came along, there's another way to move around the country. In 1903, Dr. Horatio Nelson Jackson became the first documented person to ever drive coast to coast. He did it from, from San Francisco to New York. It took him 63 days. Ken Burns has a documentary on it if you wish to see it. But you can listen to me and sum it up there. The first federal highway, anyone know the first federal highway? Named it after the 16th president? The Lincoln Highway. The Lincoln Highway was the first federal highway. It was completed in 1913. It went from Times Square, New York City, to Lincoln Park, San Francisco. 3,389 miles, mostly graded but not paved. Paving was not complete on that road until 1935. It went through 13 states. It, it, from driving coast to coast, it took on the average of 30 days driving 18 miles per hour for six hours. And now you're, you're driving through mud and dirt and all that stuff back then. You know where gas stations were? They weren't. <laughs> gas stations were rare back then, and gasoline you purchased it at pharmacies and grocery stores and places like that. I tried to find out when the, when the first drive-in gas station in different places claimed they were the first ones, but around 1910, though, was the first, uh, the first real gas station as we would know them today. Now, how about paving the highways? I, I, did Tom Hearn make it tonight? I didn't see Tom if he walked in. He helped me with this. Is that his hand up back there? Hey, Tom, this guy knows more about the paving and making of roads, I think, than anybody. And I mean anybody. But concrete and asphalt highways were not in general use until the 1930s. Of course, the Romans built ro roads for a long time. They didn't have trucks and other things moving along. And uh, 
anyway, they got the job done, but we needed more. Now, concrete. It, it, concrete's been around since the Romans, but for making roads, you had to learn how, to, how thick to pour it and how to reinforce it and, and whatnot and pour it in sections. It took a lot to learn to develop to pour it in roads. And asphalt, I didn't realize this, but the first modern asphalt plant did not open in the U.S. until 1901. And the first mechanical spreaders in the 1920s, and the first asphalt paver was 1938. So it took a while you had to get stuff so you could make roads. By the way, did you hear, a man walked into a bar and he said, uh, he, had a, he had a slab of asphalt under his arm. And he said to the bartender, I'll have two drinks, one for me and one for the road. <laughs> <laughs> now you need, besides the, the raw materials, you need equipment too. The bulldozer wasn't invented until 1923 and was not in general use until the 1930s. Dump trucks, graders, earth movers didn't come around until the 1930s. Uh, road beds, there was a lot to learn about road beds. Bridges, fortunately the trains, they learned a lot of how to make good bridges from what the trains had and how to design intersections. And Tom Hearn sent me some pictures just on intersections and my, and my head started to spin, so. But, but you've got, you know, ones in cross and ones in cloverleaf and whatnot in between. Okay, the federal highway system got, first got started in 1916 and then World War II came out and it kind of got dropped. It wasn't until 1925 that the highway acts were passed. They chose the Chevron, that's a Chevron up there. Uh, for, for the U.S. highways. And again, east-west would be even-numbered, and north-south would be uh, odd-numbered. U.S. 1, who, who here has been on U.S. 1? Everyone's hands up. It runs from uh, Houghton, Maine, I'm sorry, from Fort Kent, Maine, which is way up in that top part of Maine, all the way down to Miami. And US 101 on the West Coast goes from Port Angeles, Washington, which is way, I've been there, it's way up in the northwest corner of Washington, all the way down to San Diego. US 2, which is going to run east and west, starts in Houghton, Maine, and runs to Everett, Washington. And US 90 on the south goes from Jacksonville, Florida, Van Horn, Texas. Anyway, so that was the first setup. Now, how about Highway 52? It was built in a time span of 1926. It wasn't finished till 1935. The northern terminus today is in, is in um, Portal, North Dakota. Now, I may surprise myself if I can do this. Ah, the map. So, this, this, this red artery here, this is US 52. And so there, it started way up here. And it goes all the way down here to Charleston, South Carolina. Goes through uh, 11 states, North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, a little bit Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, 2,072 miles. There have been many route changes along the, along the uh, years, as seen here in Stanley County as it's changed. And some stretches have special names on them. So the, the construction began in 1926. It only went from Fowler, Indiana. We've got a Hoosier back here, probably knows where Fowler is, I don't. And it ran to Huntington, West Virginia. And in 1935, they expanded it uh, from Fowler, got to Bluefield, West Virginia. And finally, 1935, all the way from, from Portal, way up here, down to Charleston. The five largest cities on the road, Indianapolis is the largest, then Minneapolis, St. Then St. Paul, Minnesota, Winston-Salem, and finally Charleston. So let's get on down the road. I, by the way, I love Charles Charles Corral's show on, on America uh, on the wheels. He said, you know, you, you, can, you can travel east and west across the U.S. on the interstates and you'll never see America. So, we'll, we'll, unfortunately, we'll be on some interstates. Okay, the first... Someone noticed, Wayne Brooks noticed that I had hats up here. Thank you, Wayne. <laughs> okay. Now, hello. Oh, no, wait. Hello, my name is Sven, and I'm from North Dakota. And uh, welcome. We are the Peace Garden State. Our state tree is a chokeberry. And I think when I was playing high school basketball, I used to eat chokeberries before the game. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, 
to North Dakota, 362 miles. The, the, at the border, the town is called Portal, which means gateway, and it meets up with North Portal, Saskatchewan. The population of Portal is 135. <laughs> Gee, you think it'd attract more people. Those are basically cust customs and immigration folks. The U.S. highways, anyone been to Portal, North Dakota? Hey, is, did I see a hand up? No kidding. He was lost. Okay. You could be lying to me, and I want to know what you're saying. I know you're not. Lying. Okay. Uh, but it, it, it runs out. Of, this is farmland. This is just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly rich farmland up there. They grow corn, wheat, barley, soybeans, and another product is bees. And I wonder. It, I learned that that the beekeepers up there take their bees out to California. Because they don't have pollinators in California, they got polluters out there. They don't have pollinators, <laughs> and they pollinate out there, and then they bring the bees back, and they've got the honey. Good way to make business, anyway. Um, the first significant town is Minot, population forty-eight thousand. Uh, there's a big Air Force base out there, Minot Air Force Base, and this, and this is divided by the Mouse River. Didn't know we had one. Forty percent Scandinavians. Those Scandinavians are good people. <laughs> <laughs> During the 1930s, you can see it's not too far from the Canadian border, so there was a, an enterprising fellow from Chicago named Al Capone, and he had a big bootlegging business going through Minot uh, at that time. By the way, out in this section, high-rise buildings are called grain elevators. <laughs> but uh, this is great pheasant hunting country, too. Uh, make a, a, a lot of people come, anyway, from all over to hunt pheasants out there. One place, if you, if you don't have your own equipment, Freddie Flyer's bird hunting outfit is just off US 52. They can fix you up. Next significant town that US 52 goes to is Jamestown, North Dakota. Population 15,000. The record high in Jamestown is 118 degrees Fahrenheit up there. And the record low uh, it was minus 42, so they got us beat both ways. US 52 conjoins with I-94 at this, and, and passes through much of the state on Interstate 94. Now, some thing, other things about Jamestown, it, <clears throat> the world's largest buffalo statue, do I have that here? I have no idea. Oh, there we go, they were in North Dakota. There, there, there's, there's the border right there, by the way. Uh, does it look familiar to you? <laughs> that could be in Arizona for a long time. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jamestown, uh, the world's largest buffalo statue, 28 feet tall, is right there, if you want to know. Two famous people from Jamestown, Norma Dolores Eggstrom, stage name was Peggy Lee, the sultry singer from back in the 50s and 60s. Remember Fever? Anyway, uh, and then another person, Louis L'Amour, the most prolific writer of, of uh, Western novels, is from Jamestown also. Uh, the, um, by the way, in this stretch, of, ooh, well, I don't know, you play a lot of 20 questions with the family. Uh, there's not a lot of scene. As you're leaving, as you're leaving uh, North Dakota, uh, the next, the last town, oh, let me get here, I'm a slave to this microphone. The last town, because my voice doesn't project, and I have to use that, uh, is Fargo. It's the largest city in North Dakota on the Red River. Now, the zip recruiter said that Fargo is the number one city in the state to raise kids. Judy and I sent our boys out there, and they sent them back to us. <laughs> Some, uh, of course, in, in Fargo, uh, North Dakota State University is there. The, the North Dakota State, what's her nickname? The bison, I'm glad you all said that in <laughs> The bison, they've won, I think, is five consecutive national football titles. They're good. People from, from Fargo of note, uh, there are a lot of astronauts along 52. NASA astronaut James uh, Bushley, who wrote on four space shuttles. And Roger Maris grew up in Fargo. Now, Roger Maris, how many home runs did he hit in 1961? 61. And that record stands no more. But this record set by Roger Maris stands today. 
In one, it's his national high school football record. In one game, he had four return touchdowns. In other words, he ran um, he ran two kickoffs back for touchdowns, one punt return for a punt touchdown, and he picked off and intercepted a pass for for the fourth touchdown. So Roger Maris still has a record. Okay. Well, the U.S. 52 is continuing with with I-94 and it is crossing the Red River, going into Minnesota. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> My wife said, why don't you throw that hat out? I said, you never know when I'm going to have to give a talk to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Minnesota. Uh, this is the uh, land of 10,000 lakes. The state bird is the common loon. I'm not going to touch that one. It goes 374 miles, 234 of those miles conjoined with Interstate 94. The first uh, city of note is, is Moorhead on the Red River Valley. Very rich soil there. By the way, the first Dairy Queen in the U.S. to sell dilly bars is in Moorhead, Minnesota. That Dairy Queen's still open. Uh, this is also the destination of Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper in 1959, the day the music died. They're, they crashed in a cornfield in where in Iowa, Steve? Manly, Iowa, near Manly, Manly Iowa. Iowa. Okay, thank you. He knows even. Anyway. Okay, the, the next real city of. There's a lot of country going through there, but the. Uh, the, the, the next city really that passes through after more is Minneapolis, the city of lakes. There are 13 lakes in Minneapolis, and of course, the land of lakes butter comes from there. Population is 429,000, the sec second largest city on US 52. By the way, Pil Pillsbury, using the water power of the Mississippi River, became the first large scale flour mill. They had all this, all this grain coming in from the Midwest. And now they had power, they had mills, and, and they, they became very profitable power mills. By the way, I just learned this, that the Pillsbury Doughboy died. He died of a yeast infection. <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of sports teams. Uh, major leagues, we've got the Twins, National Football League, the Vikings, Timberwolves, and the NBA, and the Wild and National Hockey League. University of Minnesota, and their nickname is the... Golden Gophers. Golden Gophers. Thank you, Throng. Okay. Uh, and 50,000 enrollment. And I've been practicing this. <laughs> what TV show opening was that? Mary Tyler, Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I practiced it. WJM TV was on there, yes. Uh, and to, to um, Two people from uh, Minneapolis I thought I'd mention from sort of the same era, a little bit different, both showbiz. One was Prince, and the other one was Her uh, Herbert Cowery, also known as Tiny Tim, who sang Tiptoe Through the Tulips. So. Uh, that right with the Twin Cities, we have St. Paul State Capitol, population 311,000, and the US 52 crossing the Mississippi River at that point over the Lafayette Bridge. The original name of St. Paul was Pig's Eye because it was founded by a French-Canadian uh, trapper named Pierre Pig's Eye Perrault and uh, they named it in honor of him. But fortunately, St. Paul in the New Testament had better sway than that. <laughs> by the way, we're crossing the Mississippi. Uh, do you know what the polygamist hippie named his wives? One Mississippi, two Mississippi. <laughs> now, I, I should mention, and I don't have the map of Indianapolis, but, but in, in Inner Grove Heights, north, and is, is the, I guess, is, I think it's the southeast uh, quadrant of Minneapolis, in 1958, a B 52 bomber crashed very. Um, it came close to intersecting US 52 and it crashed less than a mile from the highway. That would be a startling excuse. Why were you home late, honey? The B 52. Not good. Okay, more about Minnesota. US 52 conjoins Interstate 9 for four lanes and it goes to Rochester. 
It becomes six lanes wide. That's, I think, the widest stretch. Population of Rochester, Minnesota, 121,000. The major business in, the, in Rochester, Minnesota is the Mayo Clinic. And uh, by the way, uh, it employs 34,000 people. They see over 2 million patients a year. No waiting. Uh, there, this is a myth that, that, that's been perpetrated that the Mayo Clinic researchers and the Duke scientists formulated Duke's Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> We are entering a place, and I learned, I never, I never, never knew this, called the Driftless Area. This is what, the Driftless Area, this is an area of, uh, of, of in, in, uh, that Illinois and, and Wisconsin and Minnesota and Iowa constitute. This area was not covered by the, was not covered in the last ice age. For some reason, it was it was it wasn't so it didn't get level flat like most of the country out there, and this has got uh, uh, this this is uh, characterized by steep hills, waterfalls, cold water mountain streams, uh, and uh, my brother's ridden his bike through there, and he said he'd rather stick to the flat part. Uh, the uh, here just just in in this section is Fountain, Minnesota. It is the sinkhole capital of the U.S. <laughs> the population is only 410, and I wonder why more people don't want to live there. <laughs> now, Preston, Minnesota, has, is America's trout capital, and there is a 20-foot uh, trout statue. It's along U.S. Highway 16. You have to take a little turn off 52, but it's well worth it, well worth the, the, the slight delay. The last section of Minnesota is called Laura Ingalls Wilder Highway. She's the, she's the lady who wrote Little House on the Prairie. That's the last stretch of Minnesota. By the way, did you ever see, we, Judy and I watched Grumpy Old Men the other night, and Wabasha is just a couple miles off, off 52 down that way, too. I still laugh at that. Okay, another hat here. Now we are crossing uh, I, I'm Oxford now, uh, and this is, uh, welcome to Iowa, the Hawkeye State, 173 miles, hold on. that's the Iowa, uh, yeah, uh, 173 miles, uh, US 52 goes through uh, Iowa, Iowa, mostly parallel to the Mississippi River. The state tree of Iowa is the Burr Oak which is uh, my financial situation these days, and my investor, or investment counselor, David Gaskin, made it, I guess, to bolster that. Okay, or confirm that. The Burr Oak is also the name of the town. It has no zip code. Laura Ingalls Wilder's family lived there, and her baby sister was born there in the 1870s. If you're a Little House on the Prairie fan, if you're not, we'll skip around. My brother lives in Iowa City, which is not along 52, but he told me, he's lived there a long, uh, 25 years or more, uh, he said in 1868 the Minnesota-Iowa borders were finally surveyed. And one farmer named Carl Rasmussen uh, always assumed he lived in Minnesota, but after the survey came out, it showed he actually lived in Iowa, and he was delighted because he said, I won't have to endure any more of those Minnesota winters. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, are you ready? The next, get it up here. The, the, the next community is Dyersville. Yay, that's the dependence. Field of Dreams, 1989 movie, Kevin Costner, James Earl Jones, is, in, is, is there in Dyersville. Also, the National Farm Toy Museum. If you like these little bitty cars, they, they've got a whole museum up there. Not worth the trip. Uh, the Field of Dreams. <laughs> The last city, um, well, I'm sorry, not the last, but we're getting towards the eastern side of Iowa, Dubuque. Uh, they have lead mines. Lead mines are good if you're going to make bullets. So this became an industrial area here, mining lead, and then, and then go ahead and, and, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, what would you feed me for supper? <laughs> anyway. Uh, it, it was very industrial. Most of Iowa is agriculture, but this is a, a little island of, of industrialism. A lot of Irish Catholic and German immigrants there, a very large Catholic uh, population of the 60,000 people that live there. Okay, the first Heisman Trophy winner 
who is Jay Burwanger. Jay Burwanger, thank you over here. Is that Terry Price? <laughs> said that? Uh, at the University of Chicago, first Heisman Trophy winner, is from Dubuque. And then again, we're, we're in the middle of the Driftless area. The last city of note in, uh, in Iowa is called Cibula, and it is an island, on an island in the Mississippi River. It's called the City on the River. They, back uh, before plastic was in common use, they had a lot of freshwater clams there, and they made buttons out of them. So, if you have the old freshwater clam buttons, then you had a good reason to thank Cibula. Uh, the, the highway actually, the eastbound highway actually goes north here. There are a series of little islands and causeways. So, eastern uh, US 52 is going north here until it reaches the Dale Gardner uh, Memorial, Veterans Memorial Bridge, which crosses into uh, Illinois. Uh, Dale Gardner I was an astronaut on two space shuttle missions back in the 1990s. And I wrote myself a note there that I'm going to ignore. Now, that, that we're now leaving, uh, we are leaving, this is supposed to be my top hat here. We're now in, my name's Abe, and welcome to Illinois. <laughs> ah, what's she doing up there? We'll find out. The land of Lincoln. Uh, does anyone here know what the state reptile for Illinois is? Double jeopardy, one hundred thousand yeah. dollars. What is the painted turtle? You're you're right. You're right. <laughs> now my question is, who has time to paint these turtles? <laughs> Very good. You can pick up your check on the way out. <laughs> so anyway, after we've gone over the Dale Gardner uh, Veterans Memorial Bridge, the town of Savannah, with no H on the end. It's a port city on the Mississippi River, home of Walt King, Wayne King. My dad loved him back in the, well, I mean, he liked his music back in the 1940s. <laughs> and, and of note, Savannah has the only stoplight in all of uh, Carroll County. Uh, Mount, the, the, the next town along the line is Mount Carroll, re, important, uh, I guess, because it has the lowest recorded temperature in Illinois history of minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit. That's post-glacier. The next town of note is Dixon. And a lot of interesting things about Dixon is the Petunia capital of Illinois. Uh, it's a boyhood home of President Ronald Reagan. Also Charles Walgreen, the founder of, of Walgreen Drugs, grew up in this little town. But one of the more, uh, more celebrated person, I understand she's had a show about her, Rita Crundwell. And Rita Crund very well there for a while. She is a city treasure. She embezzled $53 million from a little town between 1983 and 2012. And with that money, she bred the quarter horses and did pretty good because of $53 million, she got 52 national championships. And then she also uh, got an opportunity to make license plates at the state. <laughs> Okay, fortunately 52 does not go into Chicago, but it goes through Joliet, named of course for French explorer Louis, Louis Joliet. The Illinois and Michigan Canal, which connect the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River goes through Joliet. Population 150,000, third largest city in Illinois. And as the NASCAR has a Chicagoland Raceway, or Speedway, in there. Now the first Dairy Queen ever was founded in June 22nd of 1940 in Joliet. Isn't that nice? Joliet State Penn was there. It was notorious. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of fine people were sent there. But Dan Aykroyd, who, who played Jake uh, on the Blues Brothers, uh, was known as Joliet Jake in that movie for that. Two famous people who were, came out of uh, Joliet, musician Lionel Richie and basketball legend George Mikan, who played at DePaul in award number 99 for the uh, Minnesota Lakers later on. As we're, as we're heading further east, Bourbon, Bourbon Ace, population 18,000. Bourbon Ace was founded by John Jacob Astor, who had all this great fur empire. He built a fur trading post, made a lot of money. They sold the furs to the Europeans who played out, paid outrageous money for them. It was very prosperous until 1824, when the Illinois Central, the railroads messed it up, and it did not go through Bourbon Ace, but went through a town called Kankakee. 
Now, one thing about Bourbon Days, it is the intersection between US 52 and the iconic Route 66, which does follow the, the, the east-west direction. <laughs> Kankakee, which is, for those of you who are fluent in Potawatomi, uh, stands for the hunting grounds. Population 24,000. And then we remember Arlo Guthrie's song, City of New Orleans, which is the train that passes on the um, Illinois Central. Out on the southbound Odyssey, the train pulls out of Kankakee, rolling past the houses, farms, and wheel, in, in fields, I'm sorry. I like that song. Fred McMurray, remember him from My Three Sons? That's his hometown. And Harold Gray, the creator of Little Orphan Annie, this is also from Kankakee. Um, as as uh, we're leaving, it, there, there's some places that's very, very poorly popular. I would say poorly. They're not real popular, but because they're farmers out there. Dr. Seltzer told me this story, and I hope he doesn't mind if I relate. One of his high school buddies, Oscar Meyer, was out driving <laughs> through, uh, through that part of the country, and there weren't many people around. And he was going down US 52 at around 40 miles an hour. He looked to his left. He saw a chicken out the window. Sped up a little bit, the chicken sped up. Finally got to 55 and, and the chicken was staying right with him. And then there was a turn of the road and, and the chicken went straight down this dirt path and he had to stop and pull back and got back and Oscar got back on the dirt path, drove, drove, drove down there about 50 yards or so and there was a farmer standing in the yard. And Oscar said, excuse me sir, but did you see a chicken just run past here? And the farmer said, yeah, we, I saw him, yeah. Uh, he said, it looked like he had three legs. And the, and the farmer said, yeah, he did have three legs. And I'll tell you why. He said, me and my brothers, we love fried chicken. And so to avoid getting in fights about who gets the drumsticks, our favorite parts, we bred a chicken with three legs. <laughs> so Oscar said, well, how do they taste? He said, don't know, never could catch one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, we're going on to, we are going on to Indiana. Go oh, push the button. Indiana. Okay, we're back. Sorry, Brian. Uh, Indiana, uh, the Hickory's, the Hickory's state, or the Hoosier state, which means who's your, who's your mama, who's your dad? Uh, state food for Indiana, you know state food? No, it's the sugar cream pie. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, it goes 150 miles uh, through Indiana, US 52. First community is, is Kentland, which has a, a population of 1,600 people. But the reason, you got to go back to Kentland in 2076 because they're going to open the time capsule there. You don't want to miss it. Uh, Otterbein is another town, that home of another astronaut. Uh, uh, what if I could read the doctor's writing here? Donald Williams lived there. And then we're coming to Tip Tippecanoe County to West Lafayette, uh, home of Purdue University, who are the boiler makers, also the spoiler makers. They pulled so many upset. Uh, enrollment 40,000, overlooks the Wabash River. Uh, the uh, this uh, let's see the Lafayette business. Okay. Uh, a Lafayette businessman, John Purdue, donated the land. That's how it got its name, Purdue. It's not in the city of Purdue. Purdue Research Park, over 50 research buildings, even larger than or older than our research triangle. And, and in the research park, uh, the, Arthur Purdue, the founder of Purdue Chicken, P-E-R-D-U-E, and the scientists at, at um, engineers at West Lafayette, they bred a chicken that could count its own, her own eggs. They called it a mathma chicken. <laughs> a mathma chicken. Okay, they're wearing out. Sagamore, go to Sagamore Parkway Bridge into Lafayette, population 224,000. Uh, the, um, the um, okay. First, uh, the very first air mile delivery was, was started in Lafayette, Indiana. It was to go from, in 1859, from Lafayette to New York City on a hot air balloon. It made it all the way to uh, Crawfordsville, Indiana. Had to try it another one. 
This uh, Lafayette, of course, is named for the Marquis, Marquis de Lafayette, who was General Washington's aide. Two interesting people, from, a lot of interesting people, but Alvin Roebuck, founder of Sears Roebuck, is from Lafayette, and Charles Foley, who invented the floor game twister, is, is from there, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, the, the next community of note midway between Lafayette and Indianapolis is Lebanon, population 16,000. It got its name because the first settlers there thought that a grove of trees, of hickory trees, that reminded them of, 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 uh, of the cedars of Lebanon, and they named it Lebanon. Now think of the movie Hoosiers when you're in this section, of Old Hickory High School. Now, um, people, uh, people of note from Lebanon, Rick Mount, who was a three-time NCAA All-American at Purdue, and Bill Perigo, who was a basketball star in the 1930s. He played at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, my alma mater. Let's go Broncos. Uh, and after he graduated, he went to Benton Harbor High School in Michigan and won the state championship. This is my Benton Harbor High School. I went to high school there too. I knew you all wanted to know that one. Okay. Ah! See, Judy, I told you I'd wear that hat too. Uh, we're going into Indianapolis, entering on I-65. Indianapolis, of course, is the capital of of Indiana, and they, I, I'll give you this for the, for the Hoosiers, they did a good job of placing it about as, as uh, geographically central to the state as you could get. Uh, it is the largest, largest city on US 52. Uh, it was the main drag downtown for many years, and now it, it loops around, conjoins I-465 in an outer circle. Indianapolis, and you think cars, the manufacturer of the iconic Duesenberg, really, really a fancy car back there in the 20s and 30s, and the Stutz Bearcat were in, Indian, in Indianapolis. And of course, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was built in 1909 Brickyard. The Memorial Day 500 is held there every year for Formula One, and it, of course, NASCAR had the Brickyard, I think it's 400. What is the beverage that the winner of the race gets to drink? Is it champagne? It's milk. Uh, it's milk. Yeah, that's in the end. Got a lot of sports teams there. The Colts in the NFL are there. The Pacers in the NBA. And this, the Indianapolis Indians, a AAA minor league baseball team, is the second oldest minor league franchise to still be in the same city. And if you want to know what the oldest one is, you'll have to ask Siri, because I don't know. Um, okay, we're leaving, we're leaving Indianapolis, Rushville, hometown of 1940 presidential candidate well, Wendell Wilkie. He uh, came in second. Uh, then a little town of Brookville, home of General Lou Wallace, who was presiding judge at the trial of the Lincoln conspirators. He also wrote a great novel that Charles Heston played in the movie, Ben-Hur, he wrote that one. Okay, gang, well, we are leaving the Hoosier State, and... I'm getting, I'm getting farther and farther from my hat collection. Okay, we're entering Ohio, and my name is Orville. Okay, my brother Wilbur couldn't make it tonight. Uh, Ohio, of course, is a Buckeye state, and a Buckeye is some kind of nut. <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Link, can you uh, know the answer to this riddle? It's uh, round on the ends and high in the middle. O-H-I-O. Which spells? Ohio. 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 Very good. Yeah, birthplace of aviation. The state tree is the pawpaw tree. Uh, U.S. 52 goes 181 miles. Uh, it enters concurrently with I-74. The first community it passes through is Harrison, named for Tippecanoe himself, President William Henry Harrison. Now, they knew how to have fun back in the old days. They used to have a dog track in Harrison where monkeys in silk jackets rode as jockeys. <laughs> Must have been like clothes in 1940. Just don't have fun anymore. The next, uh, we're in Cincinnati, the other Queen City, population 309,000, US 52, conjoins I-75, goes along the Ohio River. 
before it joins 275. What, do you remember the, the, the TV show or the radio station? WKRP. WKRP in Cincinnati. How about US 52 passes the Bengals ballpark? They will be, <coughs> they can go home and they don't have to go out and run around in cold weather anymore this year. <laughs> And of course, the Reds, Cincinnati Reds uh, Stadium, the Great American Ballpark is right there along the, along the, the Ohio River. Famous businesses there. Kroger is headquarters there. And if you wonder why the town smells like Tide, it's because Procter & Gamble headquarters are there. And they like beer in Cincinnati. In fact, they have in the fall Oktoberfest, and then in the spring they have Bachfest. So if you do or don't like beer, they're drinking it there. People of significance. Who is the only person who served both as President of the United States and Chief Justice of the Supreme Court? Taft. Taft. Pardon? Taft. Taft, yes. Yeah, William Howard Taft. And he is from Cincinnati. So is Doris Day, the All-American Girl. Steven Spielberg gave us Indiana Jones and all those great ones. Ken Griffey Jr., one of the greatest all-around players. And Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, all people from, from uh, Cincinnati. Well, we're leaving Cincinnati now, U.S. Uh, 52 follows the Ohio River. Remember, Ohio is a four-letter word. Uh, it goes through Point Pleasant, birthplace of Ulysses S. Grant, the first five-star general of the Army, and also, of course, President of the United States. Then there are communities such as Moscow and Ripley that are along the river that were very important in the Underground Railroad when, when fugitive slaves were being smuggled across the Ohio and moved, and moved north. Portsmouth, Ohio uh, is uh, the home of Branch Rickey. He's the one who brought Jackie Robinson into the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers and, uh, and, and, and then integrated uh, baseball. And also, Leonard Sly's hometown. Who's Leonard Sly? His horse was Trigger, right? Roy Rogers, yeah, King of the Cowboys. I loved him. Now, also in Portsmouth is the intersection of US 52 and US 23. 23 runs north south. And if you want to see some good football, you just travel 90 miles and you can go to Columbus and see good football. If you want to see better football, you travel another 140 miles to Ann Arbor and see some really good teams. <laughs> I was looking your way, Dr. Lane. Okay. Uh, Union, Union Township, that's the last stop before we go over the bridge into uh, Huntington, West Virginia. By the way, Dr. Link, I forgot to tell him, uh, he told me when he was traveling just outside of Portsmouth this one time, and he stopped at one of these uh, country stops that had jams and jellies and honeys, and, and, and the turnips are his favorite fruit, so if you ever buy his office and you have turnips, leave them there. <laughs> anyway, he noticed that the, the fellow standing there, had, there, was, there was a pig with him, and the pig only had three legs. And, and, and Dr. Link said, interesting pig you have there, sir. He said, oh. And the fellow said, let me tell you about this pig. Last summer, one of the kids was drowning in, in, in the creek. That's what they call it up that way. And he pulled that, he pulled that young and out and saved his life. And Dr. Link said, boy, that is really great. And, and, just, and just six months ago, we had a house, our house caught on fire, and that pig woke us up, and he got us all out and saved our lives. And Dr. Link said, that is really something. And the fellow said, listen, he said, when you've got a pig this special, you don't eat them all at one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Getting further and further away here. Ken Harkey loaned me these hats, by the way. I was trying to get a coal miner's hat but for West Virginia, but he <laughs> came up with this one. Eric? Yeah. What did I do wrong? Yeah. You're still in Indiana. Oh, Indiana. <laughs> oh, Indiana. There's the tide. You want to look at that any longer? Go ahead and get that in your notes. I got one of those at home. West by Virginia. I'm sorry, my, my, uh, my videographer didn't have one for that. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm, I'm Jethro from Welcome to West by God, Virginia. US 52 crosses the Ohio River at West Huntington. Uh, the, from here on out, US 52 is labeled north and south, all the way to, the, to Charleston. It runs 150 miles through West Virginia, mostly along the southwest border. 
Wild and wonderful West Virginia and, and almost heaven. You can believe all that. Their state rock is so friendly that it, it catches on fire. It burns. Their state rock is coal. Coal, yeah. Why not? And, and they have a real warm, fuzzy state reptile. It's the timber rattlesnake. No wonder it's wild and wonderful. Huntington is right across the, the, the bridge. Uh, Huntington population 49,000, second largest city in West Virginia, home of Marshall University. Their nickname is the Thundering Herd. Thundering Herd. Well, we're getting better the closer we are getting to North Carolina. <laughs> this is the second city in the United States that had electric streetcars, the first one being, of course, San Francisco. This is also the easternmost bank that was robbed by the James Gang, Frank and Jesse James. Uh, anyway, and of course, uh, another thing that, that you don't want to miss in uh, Huntington is the Hot Dog Festival. I relish the thought of being here. <laughs> A couple famous people, or three fam two famous people, uh, Hawkshaw Hawkins, country western singer on the Grand Ole Opry, also a decorated World War II hero. Uh, and uh, Soupy Sales, the guy who made the pie in the face uh, very popular. Anyway, do you know what is 500 feet long and has only four teeth? It's the line for cotton candy at the West Virginia State Fair. <laughs> as, as you're, as you're, as you're leaving uh, Huntington, uh, the town of Canova, which has the, the Dreamland Pool that opened in 1926, this was the largest swimming pool east of the Mississippi. It's bigger than a football field. It was so big. I guess if you don't have a bathtub at home, you go to the pool. Uh, anyway, uh, get, get my... That was a pool. Okay, now due to the mountains here, it, it was more expensive to dynamite going to West Virginia. It was cheaper to build a bridge. So there's a, what to do with my other hat? You're walking on it. That's my Benton Harbor hat. Damn. Ah. Did I bring two up here? Anyway, it's a University of Kentucky hat. It's in there's your hand. 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 It's in my hand. hand? <laughs> to the refrigerator and, and yes. opens the refrigerator door and says, Judy, where's the milk? And she comes and says, is this what you're looking for? And I'm, I'm the guy. Okay. okay, we're in West Virginia now. Um, due to the mountains being so high in that part, it was cheaper to build bridges. So there's 1.8 mile stretch where there's two trips from West Virginia into Kentucky, back to West Virginia, back to Kentucky. <laughs> Back to West Virginia. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, some some um, going to Pike County, Sweet Betsy from Pike, a song we we sang. And Mingo County is a West Virginia county. It goes back and forth over the Tug River. Williamson, West Virginia, population about three thousand. The Hatfield and McCoys. This is where they were. Real friendly folks. And in Wells, West Virginia, Steve Harvey, the family feud guy is from Wells, West Virginia. And then the last city in West Virginia is Bluefield. I think it's the last one. Yeah, Bluefield. Uh, and it got its name because it, the, the, the hills around there are covered with blue chicory flowers. And so it got its name Bluefield, okay? It has the largest bituminous coal deposits in the world. Now, a person of note, born there was Maceo Pickard who wrote Sweet Georgia Brown and if he hadn't written that song how would the Harlem Globetrotters ever warm up? I don't know. <laughs> We're now passing uh, into Rocky Gap, Virginia through the East River Mountain Tunnel. This is one of three tunnels, vehicular tunnels that join, go across state lines. This being one and then the uh, Cumberland Gap Tunnel between Tennessee and Kentucky, and the Lincoln Tunnel between New York and New Jersey. And we are now in Virginia, and uh, <laughs> hi, hello, my name is Jeff. Uh, welcome to Virginia. The, um, 
This is the old Dominion state. And remember, Virginia is for lovers. There are, of the 50 states, there are four that call themselves Commonwealth. I'll give you a hint. One of them is Virginia. Can you name the other three? Massachusetts. 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 Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. I heard in unison. It's like we rehearsed it, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> the uh, the uh, state bat for Virginia is the uh, Virginia big-eared bat, which sounds like it could be someone's mother-in-law. <laughs> state tree is the uh, is, is flower of both the American dogwood. US 52 is uh, travels along I-77 there, the first community, Rocky Gap, only 511 people there. Uh, that's where Bob Williams was football coach at uh, South Carolina Clemson and Davidson was there. The, the only town of significant size is Withville, and it's named for George Wythe, who, uh, who was signed the Declaration of Independence, and he was Thomas Jefferson, that's who I'm supposed to be here, Thomas Jefferson's mentor. S something you don't want to miss there is the Chautauqua Festival, where they have stage music and hot air balloon rides. And two more little towns in Virginia. One is Hillsville, population 2,000. Who's here has been to Hillsville? Beverly, I'm sure you've been yes. there. They have only 2,000 people, but on Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, they have these huge flea marks and 650,000 people will show up for these things. Imagine. And if you want to go to the oldest continuous streetcar, serving continuous streetcar di a diner in Virginia, it's there in Hillsville. Kylie Barber, who was the, uh, was the Miss America 1979, was from there. The last community is just 260 people called Fancy Gap. And at this point, US 52, inter <coughs> it uh, intersects Blue Ridge Parkway right there, another famous room. And finally, Oh, not final. Semi-final. <laughs> Thank you. This is Doctor Seltzer loaned me my, uh, my my Carolina hat. This is I'm Buck. Welcome to North Carolina, the old North State or the Tar Heel State. We're 150 miles, all designated north south. The state reptile is the eastern box turtle. For anyone who ever wanted to box a turtle, I don't know. <laughs> And the state shag, and the state dance is a shag, and y'all remember that Lendl and Peggy Smith won the, won the big shag contest when they were kids. As you go five, is you're so late. Uh, five miles over the Virginia North Carolina border, U.S. 52 becomes the Andy Griffith Parkway because we're going into Mount Airy. It's 11 miles along. It skirts Mount Airy. Mount Airy's population is about 10,000. Mount Airy was named for a nearby pop plantation. Years ago. Do you know how many Mount Aries, take a guess, there are in the U.S.? You're not penalized for guessing. There are 19 Mount Aries in the United States. The Mount Airy Fiddlers Convention is held there every year, and there's some significant people that the, uh, live there. The conjoined twins, we used to call them Siamese twins, but the conjoined twins, Chang and Ang Bunker, lived there. They had 10 children. I, I'm not going to get into how they had the children. <laughs> The wives actually have the children. <laughs> Frank Sparger, does Frank make it tonight? Frank is from, is from Mount Airy, and they, but he's refused all DNA testing. To see <laughs> anyway. US 52 joins I-74, goes through Pilot Mountain. Pilot Mountain is just you know, one of those incredible landmarks that we're one of the few states that's got something like that. And it's called the Pilot Mountain uh, Parkway. Um, then uh, the community of King that was founded by Quakers, who of course were abolitionists, and so they, they ended up leaving for the North Country, but you, pa you pass through King, it was originally called King's Cabin, and the next town of note of size is Winston-Salem, or US 52 goes right through the heart of the city. Some famous, and I'm not covering the North Carolina, because I think most of us have been to all these places, but uh, Winston-Salem State, Rams, where Big House Gaines, uh, at one time was the winningest basketball coach in, in, in the country. Wake Forest is there, the Demon Deacons. But this is good about Winston. Moravian cookies, Krispy Kreme donuts, R.J. Reynolds tobacco, tobacco. Home, uh, I'm sorry, Haynes, Haynes knit underwear. Uh, and te Texas Speed hot sauce. Then Lexington, 
is the barbecue capital of the world, they claim. I didn't realize there are 20 bar who am I? I'm still sells me. I have 20 barbecue restaurants in, in Lexington itself, and they've got all these little pig figures downtown. Two famous people from Lexington, Bob Timberlake, the artist, and Johnny Temple, who played for the Cincinnati Reds. Then US 52 conjoins I-85, goes by Salisbury. We know Salisbury, we're a home of Cheerwine, Sandback, and Catawba College. And then on south through Grand Quarry, Rockwell, Gold Hill. I, I knew they were they got named for gold mines, Gold Hill, but before the 1849 California gold rush, uh, this was, Gold Hill is the richest and most productive mine, mining in the United States, with 5,000 people lived in Gold Hill. Gold Hill, and there were 23 gold mines. That's a lot. I got four of them up here. <laughs> then it passes through Meisenheimer, and it bisects Pfeiffer campus. At one time, uh, Mike Ryman threatened to come here. Did he sneak in? No, he didn't, the rascal. Okay, at one time, Meisenheimer had claimed the fame. It was the, oh, I gotta read this right. It was the only municipality in the United States states that whose only traffic light was not at an intersection of two or more streets. <laughs> Got that out. Now it's a blinker, but they used to have a traffic light there. Again, US 52 goes into five lanes from Richfield to New London. This stretch just opened when we first moved here in 1980. And then it comes to Albemarle. Originally it went through downtown on First Street when we moved here. Now it by, it's bypassed west of downtown, and Charlie Cooper said if, it, if I didn't say it went by the Little League ballpark where he coached all those years, <laughs> that he would be upset about me. So uh, anyway, from Albemarle through Porter, Norwood, Ansonville, Wadesboro, where it joins US 74 for a mile and a half, and then on to Morgan and McFarland, the last town in North Carolina. I think we know those. Population, I didn't know that McFarland was 95 is the population now. And we're going to South Carolina now. You didn't do your slides for a couple of states. Did I miss them? <laughs> <laughs> Seltzer? <laughs> Not in my job. <laughs> got that one? <laughs> How about yeah, this one? There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Okay, South Carolina. Hi, I'm Bubba. Uh, welcome, welcome to Palmetto State. U.S. Uh, 52 is 160 miles through here, running north-south. The state insect is the Carolina praying mantis. I guess they have very devout insects. In <laughs> and they, they have a food, which is the peach, fitting, and they have a snack, which are boiled peanuts, which I could do without. Five miles below the from below the North Carolina South Carolina border is Sheraw, and if you remember, you go through Sheraw and take a right turn downtown. It was named for the Sheraw Indians, and we all know how successful they were. They've got their big casino down there, and the Sheraw Indians are just doing great, right? <laughs> no, no. Uh, when the Europeans came in 1730, they brought with them smallpox, Utter, utterly decimated the Sheraw Indian tribe. So there are no more Sheraws around. So, K Shara Shara, but there are no more. Uh, it's, it's also the home of Dizzy G Gillespie, the famous jazz trumpeter with, the, with his uh, bell on his trumpet went up in the air. Uh, and of course, the Shara State Golf Course is one of the finest uh, municipal public, I'm sorry, municipal golf or county golf courses just as you leave Shara is there. And coming to the Society Hill, population is only 563. It's along the PD River. It was, Society Hill was a major transportation center before the railroads came in. It was settled by the Welsh, and their patron saint is St. David. So they had the St. David Society and built their clubhouse up on a hill, and then they dropped to St. David, and it's just Society Hill. I think this is an unsubstantiated rural myth that the community of Society Hill supports itself by giving speeding tickets. <laughs> We're coming to Darlington, population 6,000. I think there's the racetrack. Yeah, Darlington, population 6,000. Its houses were not burned by General Sherman as he came to march to the sea because one of his lieutenants 
had designed one of the houses there and he did not want the city burned down. But Darlington Speedway, of course, is here. Labor Day, uh, Southern 500, but it's actually 501 miles is the race. Harry Bird, 1952 Rookie of the Year, and Darlington, and Johnny Sturgeon, former director of Santa County YMCA, is from Darlington also. Then we're passing to Florence. Oh, Leonardo, Dante, Michelangelo. Oh, great. Oh, no, wrong one, wrong one. Uh, Florence, South Carolina. Francis Marion University. Anyone know their nickname? Swamp Foxes. Patriots. Reggie Sanders, Major League Baseball standout. And a fellow named Blackie Collins, who is a renowned knife designer who makes all kinds of fancy knives from there. And we're, we're now in Lake City, population 6,600. Lake City is the bean capital of the, of the uh, world, or so they claim. And they very wisely have their bean market in an open air market. <laughs> and it's not for, it's not for vision. Ronald McNair, an astronaut who tragically died in the space shuttle, is from Lake City. Uh, next community is King Street, 3300, Revolutionary War hero Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, fought the Brits and beat him in the Battle of King Street. Two people of note uh, from there, Teddy Pendergrass, uh, who was a singer, lead singer with Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. What are, what are some of their great, the best songs that I remember? If you, you want me to sing it for you, yeah. you don't. If you, if you don't know me by now. Anyway, uh, and then uh, Joseph Goldstein, 1985 Nobel Prize medicine, who spoiled our diets a lot because he, he got the Nobel Prize for tying in the connection between cholesterol and heart disease and said, don't eat the bacon, boo. Uh, next committee, Monk's Corner, where, it, where US 52 is called Blue Star Highway, and then Goose Creek, 46,000 population. It, it got started because it was the deer skin trade. And, and again, trappers and hunters brought deer in, they sold those hides over to England. And the Ortonto Plantation Indigo bats, where making purple dye was very prosperous. The US Navy Nuclear Power School. I'm proud to say my son is a graduate of the U.S. Navy Power School there. Quite a place. And then U.S. 52 through North Charleston, and then finally into Charleston, population 150,000, enters on I-26, and it goes through, anyway, you get off on U.S. 17, go down Meeting Street, to the southeast terminus, there is no sign at the, at the end uh, there, it's on number two Meeting Street, White Point Gardens in Charleston Harbor, and you have to go by one of my favorite restaurants, Magnolia's. I love that place. So in summary, I'll keep Bubba's hat on. In summary, we started away. Okay, I'm gonna. How do I? How do we get this back? Am I going backwards? Boy, can I ever put it in reverse? <laughs> Hi, Annie. I want to get across the bridge again. So there we are. North Dakota and the map. So we started, we started way up here at the Canadian borders. And we have gone through 11 states, 2,072 miles, and about a dozen corny jokes. We went through the Midwestern prairies, through the lake country of Minnesota, to the driftless area, to across the Mississippi River, to the fertile plains of the central Midwest, the Appalachian Mountains, to the Piedmont, and to the low country of the Atlantic Ocean. And this is how Santa County, here we be, and this is how we connect with the world. Okay, that is it. I do have, Dr. Seltzer gave acknowledgement at the beginning, but I would like to, Pat Bramlett worked harder on this than I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Megan Sullivan helped at the, at the History Center. William Nix did the, the IT stuff for me. Tim Kirk. Is Tim Kirk here? Because I've never met him. I'd have to talk, meet you. Help with the DOT. Kenny Hill, DOT, also is a help. Tom Hearn, who did acknowledge. Tom Hearn, it was, that stuff was over my head, Tom. Ken Harkey gave this, these great hats, or most of them. Steve Seltzer, 
with, uh, with, the, with this flowery introduction. Uh, <laughs> the posters you saw, don't you know how clever those posters were? I had nothing to do with them, except having my name. Andrew Bramlett, Pat's grandson, is how old Andrew? 16. He did those. The kid, the kid has, has got talent. Dave Andrews, uh, this uh, uh, helped with WSBC. BJ Dry at the snap, and also Torby Thorpe at the snap. It, it, I will, I will. Uh, if y'all want to leave, you can leave. If you want to ask questions, I'll do questions. This is not a PhD thesis. There are all kinds of holes that can be shot into this thing. But, uh, and I've never. Has anyone here ever driven? The length of it. There was a fellow named Tony Hill. I don't. Tony Hill here. Are you Tony Hill? Has been up in Minnesota uh, or North Dakota on this. Minnesota, North Dakota. So you 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 know more about? It. I should have had you do this part. It's just, it's just I, I had a patient. This is back in the eighties. I had a patient come in. His back was killing him, and I said, "Well, what have you been doing?" Oh, nothing much. He and his buddies. And there were four of them, got in a pickup truck, this was in October, and drove all the way to North Dakota. He rode in the back of the truck, there and back, and, but he hadn't done anything to hurt his back. <laughs> but people would get, yeah, Stanley County folks go up there to hunt, so. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, if you want to ask it in group, or you want to ask them other than that, uh, the, all my hats hold money. <laughs> um, and uh, welcome to that. But thank you very much for coming. Give me my flight. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We had some good laughs and we learned a lot. Uh, we'll be getting information out about our next program, which will be in March. And I'll be sending out an email. If you do not get our emails, there's uh, there are two tablets on the back round table back there. Um, if you give us your email address, we will be in touch with you. And we also still have some books over here on the table that uh, the profit from that goes, the, all the money from that goes to the Historical Society. So thank you again. And, um, Thank you, Eric, for all you have done. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.